Welcome to this video tutorial on how to use Eclipse as integrated development environment for extending OpenFOAM. Using an IDE has several advantages, as for example syntax highlighting, syntax checking or autocompletion. Just to mention a few. In this first video I will show you how to set up Eclipse. As a practical task we will add a scalar transport equation to the IcoFOAM solver. How to test the new application or library from within Eclipse will be part of the second video. So let's get started. First, let me give you some basic information about my system. You can see that I'm currently running the first update of Ubuntu 14.04 with OpenFOAM 2.3.0 installed in my home directory. If you run a different configuration, the resulting setup may differ in some details from the one you will see in this video. As you may know, Eclipse is actually an IDE for Java, but it has a variety of plugins for other programming languages. The extension for C and C++ development is called Eclipse C C++ Development Toolkit, or short Eclipse CDT. From the Ubuntu software repository, we can install Eclipse with the CDT pre-installed. To do so, type sudo apt-get install eclipse-cdt. As usual, the repository version is not the newest available version of Eclipse CDT. I also tested the newest stable version from the Eclipse website, but there was no noticeable difference, which is why I decided to stick with the easiest way of installing new software. Before starting Eclipse for the first time, it is useful to create the following folder structure. Since we are going to implement a new solver, I create a folder named Applications with the subfolder Solvers, as you would find in your OpenFOAM installation directory. This is not necessary, but it helps to keep our changes tidy. Now, from the OpenFOAM app directory, create a copy of the IcoFOAM folder and rename it to Scalar IcoFOAM. To delete the old files that were created during the compilation of IcoFoam, run wclean. After that, navigate back to the parent folder and start Eclipse. As a first step, choose the solvers directory as workspace. To create a new project, Click on File, New, Project. In the new appearing window, expand the options for C, C++ and select C++ Project. Next, pick MD Project as Project Type and Linux GCC as Toolchain. The project name must coincide with the name of our new application. On the left side, in the Project Explorer, you will find all project files. First, we need to adjust the name of the C file according to the name of the new solver. The next file to modify is located inside the make directory. Here again, we adjust the application name. It is good practice not to mix the native OpenFOAM applications with the one we implement. Therefore change the path for the executable to foam user appin and lastly adjust the name of the executable. Now we are ready to make a first test build. First in the project menu uncheck build automatically. After that in the same menu open the project properties. Click on the C++ build section, change the build command to wmake and adjust the build location. Finally, click on the build icon and check the created console output. If the compilation finished successfully, we now find a new executable in the foam user appin. Before I started Eclipse for the first time, I ran the command wclean to delete all the files created during the compilation. We can make this command available in Eclipse using a so-called make target. As a target name, you may choose wclean and the build command should be wclean without any options. 
Press Shift plus F9 to quickly access and run the Make targets. You may have noticed all the orange and red wavy lines in our source code. Eclipse complains about syntax errors, although the application compiles without any errors. This is because the header files containing declarations of all the classes and methods cannot be found by Eclipse, as they are not in our workspace. So we need to explain Eclipse where these files are located. In order to find out the required path, have a look on the options file in the make directory. There you see two different folders called ln include, which wmake uses for the compilation. To add these locations to Eclipse, open the project properties window, navigate to path and symbols and click on the tab ln include. Furthermore, I'm adding another folder containing all the basic open foam types, as this reduces the number of displayed syntax errors. This time I'm using the environment variable foam src instead of using the file browser, just to show you this optional way. After applying the changes, the indexer starts to work, whose status can be followed in the lower right corner. Also, the specified directories can be found in the Project Explorer. When you now look at the source files, most of the errors should have disappeared. Before we start to implement the additional transport equation, I would like to draw your attention on another problem, which you may encounter. Sooner or later, you probably try to open Eclipse using a desktop launcher instead of opening it via a terminal. If you do so and then try to build the sources, an error message is displayed stating that the command wmake is unknown. This is because every time you open a new terminal window, the open foam variables are sourced again. Therefore, every application you start via this terminal can access the variables. As a consequence, we are going to modify the launcher so that it shows exactly the same behavior when we click on it. First, open the eclipse.desktop file. Keep in mind that you need root privileges. Here we set the value of terminal to true and adopt the command to be executed. When reopening Eclipse via the launcher, everything should work again. Finally, we can start to implement the transport equation. First, in the create fields header file, copy and paste the entry of field P and replace the P with a T. You may think of this as temperature. Next we do the same with nu and replace nu with dt. You may think of this as thermal diffusivity. Now save the changes and open the C file. The right place to insert our code is between the line runtime.write and the curly bracket above it. We will define and solve the equation in the same fashion as done for the pressure equation. The autocompletion is now a welcome support to avoid typos. When I try to display the available methods for a T equation, unfortunately, no proposals are found. A disadvantage of Eclipse is, in my opinion, the indexer, which is not working properly. As a result, 
there are still many red wavy lines in the source code and also the autocompletion only works sometimes. I tried to fix this behavior but all the improvements were either only temporary or slowed down the ID extremely, which is why I did not make it a part of the video. Well, that concludes this video and I hope you found it useful. If you have any question or any additional advice in response to this tutorial, feel free to post in the comment section. Until next time, thank you for watching.